Hey there, everybody. This January 7th, Russian Christmas, I made an announcement on the Russian YouTube channel that every Sunday I would be releasing a video dedicated to um, talking about the scripture, talking about the Bible and how I view the message of the Bible and the gospel. Also, I promised my subscribers that I'd be answering one Bible question every Sunday. Now, I've got quite a few subscribers on the Russian YouTube channel, so lots of questions, lots of material for making content. So, But for the English YouTube channel, I thought I'd do something similar um, in a slightly different vein. I don't know if there's going to be if anyone has questions, <laughs> if somebody had a question that they specifically wanted me to answer, some Bible question, sure, I'll answer it. But mainly what I'd like to do is start to kind of kind of use this once every Sunday regular release of this quote unquote video episode to talk about things that, that I'm thinking about, some things, spiritual things, things that God is showing me through his word or through the, through the scriptures um, or just, just whatever is kind of crossing, crossing my radar. So... Today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to sit down and have what, we, what I'm calling Bible Talks in Russian, and we'll have a Bible Talk in English. <laughs> so, today we're going to be talking about faith. We had a, a question on the Russian YouTube channel that prompted me to really think a little bit differently about faith than, I, than, than maybe I have before, um, maybe just a little bit more deeply, and I'd like to share that with you. So, uh, without any further ado, let's uh, step inside to our yurt here, sit down with a cup of coffee, and uh, have a little talk about faith. So last week I got this letter from a young man who says that he has lost his faith. He said that he grew up in a Christian household, that when he was baptized, when he was a child, he, in his youth he believed and felt that that was a great source of strength for him for in, his, in his youth. But when he left his father's home, when he left his, his family of origin, so to speak, um, got out into the world, he was convinced by both arguments against faith, against um, the existence of God, and also by the corruption of the church and the illegitimacy of the church as an institution. So his question to me was, Justice, how can I find faith? You know, I, I feel that I really lost something important when I lost my faith, a source of strength. But at this point, I, I feel so ridiculous looking up to the clouds, seeking help from some bearded man in the sky. Help me back towards faith. Help me to find faith. So I was thinking about this and wanting to respond to him. And of course, I went to Hebrews 11, which, as many of you know, is the kind of go-to chapter in the Bible for faith. Nice, you know, straight-up definitions. Uh, Hebrews 11, went there to, talk, to start talking to him about it. And just as I was explaining faith to him, as I was kind of going through the, the mechanics of explaining the definition of faith, because that's what I wanted to do, is kind of give him a good, solid definition of what faith was, for him to work with, to move towards that as a goal, it just, a few things just jumped out at me, and I really wanted to share. So, Hebrews 11, verse 1, and so faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Now, in Russian, uh, it sounds a little bit different, and interestingly enough, a lot of times, the, the Russian translation is strikingly uh, often, I mean, to me, it, it seems often, is, is, is a lot closer, or at least has at least shades of meaning that are closer to the Greek or whatever whatever I can ascertain of the original meaning uh, when I look at, at um, Greek dictionaries and, and Strong's and stuff. And I don't mean to really get all Greeky on you guys, because I, I really don't like that myself usually, but this, here it, it's important. In the Russian, it sounds more like faith is the manifestation of things hoped for. It's the assurance or the understanding or the assurance, the mental, the cognitive assurance of things unseen. I was using this as a basic definition uh, of faith for this young man. And in, in my response to him, I started responding and saying, well, first of all, we need, to, we need to have assurance. We need to believe. We need to have this mental assent. You know, we need to have this cognitive experience or this cognitive, yeah, this cognitive assent that we believe in God, that we believe that God is. And it just struck me, for, for the first time in my life, I've always kind of explained faith that way. You know, you need to believe in your, in your heart first, right? And then whatever else comes, comes out of that. And uh, when I realized that I had transposed those two, uh, two sections, faith is the manifestation, it's the substance of things hoped for, then 
It's the evidence or the assurance of things unseen. And we in our lives, like this young man, we want evidence first. Like the Pharisees, we come to Christ and demand a sign. And, and, and the guy in the letter, his original letter that he wrote to me, he even said that. He said, you know, I, I need a miracle. I need a sign, some little sign that would show me so that, I could, so that I could believe. And I think we want that in our modern age, in our modern day. That's what we want to do. We want to prove that there was a literal flood or that the world was literally created in seven days or whatever else, you know, some sort of scientific proof, some hard and core, hard and fat hard and fast, hardcore argument that would just de de blow away the arguments of our opponents, um, blow our opponents out of the water. That's what we're looking for, some, some of this hard and fast proof evidence so that we can build our faith on that. And that is so not what Hebrews is saying here. I mean, faith is the manifestation of things hoped for. And then it's the evidence or the assurance of things unseen. It's interesting, I, I looked at that word again, the Strong's, that word, the manifestation, the one that we use in the English as substance, and it's translated in, many, in a lot of different ways, like the meaning underlying the meaning, the thing that lies at the very basis of understanding, the foundation, the thing that is underneath reality, the reality under reality, I suppose, as Lewis would put it. Um, but also, one of the parallel verses is in the first chapter of Hebrews, where Paul says that Christ is the, the literal manifestation, the embodiment of, of God. He is the manifestation of God in the flesh. That's the word that he uses, the same word that he uses in Hebrews 11, verse 1, that, that faith is the embodiment, it's the indwelling of things that are hoped for. It's, it's, it's the thing put into flesh, and that's what faith is. So there's this difference. Hope is, is this thing, this vague idea that we have somewhere off in the future, in the distance, that we, that we want to grasp onto. But faith is the process of bringing that hope and putting it into practice, putting it in, manifesting it in the world. And the thing about it that, that I see here in Hebrews 1, or in Hebrews 11, verse 1, is that faith when it's manifested like that, when that hope is manifested, and that's the definition of faith, hope being manifested, then that gives you assurance. That gives you evidence of the things unseen. It's not the other way around. We don't get cognitive mental assent first and then get some sort of a miracle. You know, We get the obedience, the manifesting of the thing that we hope on, and then we get the assurance of it. Paul talks in Romans, he says, we're saved by, by hope, we're saved through hope, that is. You know, and hope is, is hope when it's unseen. Once it's, once it's seen, it's become knowledge, it's no longer hope. And this is the process of faith. And this is an interesting thing, because faith, you know, Hebrews goes on to say, by faith the worlds were created, by faith the ancients obtained a great testimony, by faith all of the people of God who did anything worth doing did it by faith. And that was this process of seeing something afar off, seeing a hope, and then manifesting that in reality. It wasn't the process of just, you know, having a, a belief or a cognitive assent. It was a manifestation of the thing that was hoped for. And then that began to transfer and translate into what we can call assurance or evidence. Think of a, of a just completely worldly example. Faith is this power that moves the world. I mean... Even outside of the realm of religion or God, the Wright brothers, you know, when they're inventing the airplane, they have this hope of a machine that can make men fly. No one had seen, you know, men fly a machine of its own power. You know, no one had seen anything like that before. So a winged apparatus that could that could make men fly. This is this is something that was, you know, completely outside of the realm of possibility. But there's these two guys who have this hope. They have this hope that they can make it. They 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 sure they have some assurance. Sure they have some vague hope, like I'm saying. They see the birds, they see some examples from nature, and so they, they work towards that. So they manifest their hope into reality. They begin to embody that hope into reality through experimentation, through trial and error, failure, risk of life. They Im implement that into life, and then when they first take off, when that first flight at Kitty Hawk happens, when their when their runners leave the ground for the first time, they make that that small 
insignificant, you know, in the scope of, of, uh, of the kind of flights that we can make now, but so significant at that time, that first stumbling step into aviation, that was faith. That was faith manifested, hope manifested, and that was, and that was their faith. And then, based on that progression, based on that, you know, experience, you have evidence of the things that unseen that they can actually be. Like, just think about it. I mean, how much more sure were the Wright brothers that a Boeing 747 could be possible after that first flight? I mean, still, they're still, you know, decades and almost 100 years away from a Boeing 747, but they have assurance. They have assurance of the unseen thing, but it's based on faith manifesting or manifesting the hope through faith, bringing that hope, pulling that hope out of the, the area of the abstract, out of the area of the, of the mental, the spiritual, into the area of, of reality. And I think that's something that's really, really important. Faith is not a cerebral ascent. It is not agreeing with God. Faith is obeying God. Faith is manifesting into reality that which we hope for. That same Sunday that I was working on, last Sunday that I was working on this, this answer for this young man about faith, we, when our little church here on the farm, we had, we had communion and we were celebrating the Lord's Supper together. And it struck me in an amazing new way, in a new light, I guess. Peter says that in the end there will come scoffers who will say, where is the evidence of his appearing? Where is the assurance of his coming? From the days of our fathers fell asleep till now, the world has gone on as it always has. Nothing has changed. So where is, where is the proof of his coming? Where is the proof of his appearance? And we, as Christians, look at the, the past 2,000 years full of the wars and the martyrdoms and the schisms in the church and the the suffering, the, the persecution from both without and within. We see the great and glorious hope that Christ left us, but he left us so long ago, 2,000 years, and we can begin to feel as though we're orphaned, as though we've been abandoned, as though Christ, you know, <laughs> left, left us here, stranded, abandoned on this island, hopeless like children lost in, lost in a crowd, lost in the wilderness. And then we come together and we do communion. We break the bread, we drink the wine, we proclaim Christ's death till he comes. And Paul says that in 1 Corinthians, whenever we drink, whenever we eat the bread and drink the cup, we're proclaiming Christ's death till, he's, till, till he comes, proclaiming that he was a reality, that he is a reality, that he lived, that he died, that he rose again, and that he is coming for us, and that we are not abandoned. So where is the assurance of his coming? Where is the evidence of the things unseen? It's in the manifestation. It's in the embodiment of our obedience to eat the bread and to drink the wine and to proclaim that Christ mysteriously, some way, is right here right here with us. And that's, and, and it really, it's really that way. It, it, it turns out that when you do that in faith, without proof, you feel the proof in your heart. God leads you. God shows you. He begins to speak and work with you and in a mysterious way that we can't understand with our minds. Christ is present in the communion. Christ is present in his church. Christ is present in his body. And we become sure, we have more assurance, we have the evidence that he is coming, the evidence of things unseen. And it is by the grace of God that it's, that it's this way and not the other way around. The father with the son who is, who is suffering comes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, heal my son, can you heal my son? And Jesus says, do you believe? Do you have faith? Do you believe? The father says, I do believe. Help my unbelief. And sometimes that's all we can do, right? I mean, sometimes that's all we can do. Sheer willpower. Sheer making that step of faith. Even if there's so many doubts that plague our minds. Even if there's so much fear. 
the only hope for change, the only hope for, for, you know, pulling ourselves up or, or, or latching on to the hope, which is, which is the gospel, and allowing that to pull us up out of ourselves and out of our, our own despair sometimes, is to make that, that brute force act of will to just act in faith. Sometimes it's, it's too much to ask someone to really, really, really believe. Maybe they don't have it. There's, it's not in them. But God has made a way for us through obedience to start walking in faith, even before belief takes full control of us. We step out in faith. We obey his word. We do what Jesus commanded. We, we follow the commandments of the gospel. We do communion, whatever. And that faith, we manifest our hope through faith. And that gives us proof, that gives us evidence of the things unseen. I've been reading some Dostoevsky lately, and there's a book that I really like. It's, of course, Dostoevsky's great uh, masterpiece, was the Brothers Karamazov. And in that masterpiece, um, Ivan, the, the middle brother, who is the intellectual, is constantly just astounding and 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 terrorizing his younger brother Alyosha with his intellectual arguments against the existence of God, with his intellectual arguments against the church, with his intellectual arguments against, you know, all, all of the things that Alyosha holds, sacred and dear and holy. And Alyosha, it's frustrating as a believer to read that, because Alyosha is just, he's up, he's up on the ropes, you know, he's beaten back intellectually. And yet, he holds to it. He continues to walk out that faith that he, that he holds and does the deeds of faith, manifests the thing that he hopes for through faith in his life. And Ivan ends up dead and insane. You know, Alyosha ends up moving, moving into a deeper place with God. And I think that's for us, is a, is a place of hope. We don't always have to have all the answers. God help us if we have to have all the answers. If we have to have it all figured out in a mental, cerebral way. God help us. Who of us can say that? But we all, in simple faith, like a child believing, can manifest the thing that we hope for. Follow Christ. Do what he says. And believe and, and see in our life how, how that hope manifested through faith gives us the evidence of things unseen, gives us the assurance of the things that we see, though through a glass darkly. I hope this has uh, helped you at all, uh, but it really has touched me this last couple of, this last week, this last couple of days especially. I've been thinking a lot about it, and I just wanted to share that with you, and I hope God blesses you. All right, thanks so much. Bye. Till next Sunday.